Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. You are amazing, doing wonderful things in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray right now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive help from heaven even revelation to understand the scriptures in Jesus name amen praise God now then I was showing something to you in Jeremiah you know sometimes you you start somewhere now I have a clear picture on where we're going see <laughs> but as we start I still have to depend on the Holy Spirit to meet this need meet that need meet that need that's how it works see so it's not just about okay i was preparing for this recording and the lord told me exactly what to share now i know what i'm going to share i don't come with head knowledge is it because the moment the lord have spoken to you and you receive it and you're carrying it like that in your heart it has become head knowledge to you but as a good minister of the, of, of the gospel, you know, yes. But then when you stand to minister, you know you have to still depend on the Holy Spirit. So while depending on him, if he doesn't let you enter yet, you don't enter. Why? Because he knows your audience at that moment. He knows what they need right now. He knows what someone is crying for right now. And sometimes I get this message. Someone said, there's, there's one line you said. And then and I've, many times you know, I, I hear this. Like, you were talking about something, but you deviated a bit. Do you know that diversion was, was for me? I got blessed. It answered a lot of questions. Because the Lord knows who he is blessing. See? Praise God. So let's, let's get to our Jeremiah. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, what's the point of preaching a message and no one is understanding what you're saying or no one is being blessed? See, that's why you need to depend on the Holy Spirit. It says, no more shall every man teach his neighbor, Jeremiah 31 verse 34. And every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Now listen. Do you know what Jeremiah said here? He was talking about the last days. Because the Hebrews talked about this. And he was bringing it from what Jeremiah said. And listen, we are still not in the fullness of this prophecy. Now, this was a prophecy. But hey, do you know that this was the same prophecy that Joel spoke about? What Jeremiah just said here is in details to Joel's prophecy. Now let's look at what Joel said. Joel chapter 2. Quickly. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. Watch this now. It says, And it shall come to pass afterward. Now I want you to take note of that word, afterward. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Now, remember, Jeremiah said, it shall come to pass that I will make a new covenant with the house of Judah and with the house of Israel. Not like the first covenant. And then he says, I will put my law in their hearts and in their mind. Now, Joel is saying here that it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, my mind is, my heart is just indicted in a good matter. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. And also on 
my maid, maid, maid servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Okay. So God says, Joel prophesying by the word of the Lord now says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And what's going to happen when I pour out my spirit upon all flesh? Did you notice he didn't say, you shall begin to receive anointing to raise the dead? He didn't say, you shall begin to do mighty things on the earth. What did he say? He said, your sons and your daughters, as a result of the outpouring of the Spirit of God, shall begin to prophesy. Why will they prophesy? Because they will begin to hear and understand God. He says, your young men, your old men shall dream dreams. What are dreams? The voice of God coming. Now, not just dream of, I saw myself, you know, and driving, and we're now driving and driving and driving. You know, sometimes people are telling their dream. We're now driving and driving and driving. We drove far, and then we now got to one junction. When we got to that junction, we now saw one man selling something by the left. And when we saw the man, we now greeted him, and then we now continued our journey. We now continued and drove, drove, drove. You're like, sorry, where is this going? To? <laughs> That's not the kind of dream we're talking about. We're talking about dreams that brings forth the word of God to you. That's why I tell people, like, when you have a dream, you know, sometimes people don't know. I don't know whether this dream is of the Lord or it's just a dream. Hear me. Any dream that is of the Lord, number one, it's clear. Number two, there will be words spoken in it that you can hold on to. And then it will bring you knowledge. You know, remember I told you, how do you know the difference between God speaking to you and your mind. I told you that it will bring, when God speaks to you, it will bring knowledge to your mind. See? It will bring understanding to your mind. It will give you direction. So a dream from the Lord will give you direction. Now most people don't understand when God is giving them a dream and when God is, uh, or when the devil is opposing them in a dream. You need to understand those things. If you have a dream and someone is opposing you, you know, I had a dream and, and somebody was telling me that I cannot enter that house. Now, you know that's the devil. So when you wake up from that kind of a dream, you take authority immediately. You see, because there's an opposition. So I'm just trying to tell you simple ways you understand dreams. There's an opposition in that dream. So you wake up. Don't just wake up and say, hmm, looks so real. Oh. Thank God it's a dream. No. You've just been shown what is going on in the realm of the spirit. And let me tell you one truth about what goes on in the realm of the spirit. It will not matter until you make it matter here. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you have a dream like that and someone's telling you, see that house you're building, you will never enter it. Don't wake up and say, hmm. God just spoke to me and said, I will never enter that house. And that's not God speaking to you. Is he fighting with you? <laughs> Can God tell you, see that's your building, you will never enter it. That's not God speaking to you. Except where you are living in disobedience. See, God has told you what to do and you're going over to build a house and then you now see, have a dream and say, and even that is not God that's speaking to you. But maybe it's an angel that's talking to you. They're just telling you what is going to happen. So what do you do? Repent. Go and do what God has commanded you to do. But on normal ground, God is not going to talk to you like that. Now that's an opposition. So if, all, if you're not working in disobedience, that's why you need to examine your heart. That's what the Bible says. Judge yourself so that you will not be judged. So you wake up from a dream of opposition, you judge yourself. Am I doing the right thing? See, if your heart doesn't condemn you now, not because you've, you've numbed your heart, if genuinely your heart doesn't condemn you, then you know that that's the devil bringing an opposition against you. When you wake up, he says, Satan, you have no right to stop me from entering the house that God has given me. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, I bind you. Get out of my way now. He will obey. Someone's like, why are you buying it? No, I just saw something, so I had to deal with it. See? But God, you may be building a house and you have a dream. 
or you're about to set out to site and then you have a dream and in that dream he said don't build your house here go and build your house in Susan's so place now that is direction see now that's God that's not the devil Satan never gives direction are you getting me God will give you direction now you see in that kind of a dream you you heard a voice you heard words and the words brought understanding to you, it brought knowledge to you. So don't stay here, go stay in that place. You obey. So you wake up from that dream and say, thank you, Lord, I, I receive wisdom. And then you go change your plans. See, what you do when you wake up from the dream is what will make that dream manifest or not. Do you remember Solomon? When he prayed and God says, look, Ask me anything. And he says, oh Lord, give me an understanding heart so that I'll be able to rule these people well. Hey, guess what? That whole thing was in a dream. Praise <laughs> God. But you know what happened? When Solomon woke up from that dream, he did something. Go study it for yourself. The scripture references on the screen. He said, he called his servants together and said, hey, guys, we're throwing a party. Say, why are we throwing a party? God has given me wisdom. So he received that dream and made it manifest physically because he believed. So now watch this now. So he says, they will prophesy. Your young men will, your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Guess what? All these things, prophecy, dreams, visions, are avenues through which God speaks to us individually. See? Do you understand it now? So when Jeremiah said, hey, I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds. And no one will say to his neighbor or to his brother, know the Lord. For they all will know me from the least to the greatest. How is that going to happen? That's going to happen when God pours out his spirit upon all flesh. And everyone begins to hear the voice of God to prophesy. Everyone, now what does it mean prophesy? It's not a, my children, my children, hear ye the word of the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you today i am with you that's not you see that's not just the kind of prophecy he's talking about you know that right do you know you 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 can be you know with the lord and just just having fellowship having a good time with the lord and then the lord tells you when you get to work today tell this person this 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 and that tell this person that thing that he's looking for he should check this drawer i said Oh, okay, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then you go to the office. The moment you get to office and you're speaking, do you know you're prophesying? You don't, you don't necessarily have to just say it, the Lord. That thing that you're looking for, go and check, you know, something you want to be dramatic. You can be normal and be a prophet. <laughs> Praise God. You, you, you can be prophesying and, and some, you know, I, I find that, you know, sometimes I'm talking with someone, you know, we're just talking, and say, hey, Pastor, wait, are you, are you speaking by the Spirit now? Or you are like, Sorry, I never speak any other way. I always speak by the Spirit. Praise God. Yeah. Because everything I say, I'm conscious to speak as the oracle of the Lord. That's what the scriptures tell us. So even when you're joking, know that you see, you're in tune with the Spirit of God. And He's giving you what to say. See? So when you're discussing, you're, whatever you're doing, you open yourself and you begin to speak and you begin to prophesy. See? And that's how we relate as believers. We prophesy to one another. Hallelujah. That's why it says, it says be not drunk with wine, but, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. What's he telling you? Prophesy. Prophesy. Oh, listen. Stay in the company of believers that's the best place to be in a company where where where, where prophecies you know prophet is easy you know you just call up a friend say yeah how now how is everything you know what's going on what's going on with you, you say yeah, man you know you guys are just talking and suddenly he begins to speak by the word of the lord see and he doesn't have to say thus says the lord he just say hey this just came to my spirit have you thought of doing this or doing that? Whoa, whoa, I see, I see, I see. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, 
That's the kind of friends you should have. Not the one you sit down and say, hmm, have you heard? Heard what? Hmm. So, so, person, please, don't tell me, have you heard? And tell me what they said in the news. Tell me what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Then I'll get edified, get energized, and go out to do mighty things for the Lord. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.